Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, uh, in continuation to what we have uh, discussed uh, in the indigenous knowledge system, uh, this is a follow up and then a continuation uh, which will be situated uh, slightly in a different tone. Now, uh, I am drawing primarily from the works of uh, what I have also partly mentioned, uh, the works of P. S. Ramakrishnan and uh, in his work it is very interesting to look at how uh, the kind of ecological journey which is uh, perhaps uh, being seen in the context of uh, two complementary uh, uh, or two world view in a way rather. Uh, wherein one is represented by the formal knowledge and the other is by the uh, informal knowledge or the uh, traditional wish which is guided by traditional wisdom. Now, this ecological journey in a way represents this uh, the great divide that persists between the two worlds. Now, what uh, Ramakrishna in a way tries to present here is uh, in, in his works uh, titled Once and Two Worlds the Ecological Journey. So, even when human have you know experienced the same kind of uh, time, space and environment, they do have different kind of uh, you know uh, how they make sense or interact with the environment is something which is different. Now, therefore, this great divide uh, can be seen in the context of the rich and the poor and the rich and the rural poor with the rich uh, you know uh, traditional wisdom on the one hand and is the larger scientific elite and the of with formal learning on the other. So, these are the kind of the two premises which you know in a way share uh, you know a divide. Now, this whole journey in a way begins with uh, understanding nature and concludes by discussing an evolving eco philosophy. So, in the pursuit to understanding nature, uh, one tends to you know involve in different uh, arts for a knowledge that is the traditional knowledge and the formal knowledge. Traditional knowledge again is represented by a villager with a rich experiential traditional knowledge, heritage and the formal knowledge which is represented by you know a scientist with his textbook based formulation in the area of natural resource management. Now, this book in a way is uh, sort of a dialogue which, which, ha which is constantly engaging with where a scientist uh, set out of his you know uh, textbook based formulations and trying to make sense of uh, the natural resource uh, how it is being managed and on the other hand the rural base uh, who have rich traditional knowledge in a way tries to explain the stance which normally is being used in their everyday life. Now, this piece of research that is once and two worlds an ecological journey uh, in a way argues that there exists an inseparable linkages between different ecosystem namely land water and air which, which normally link ecology economics and ethics sustainable development uh, sustainable management of natural resources. 
it, it, it follows a human approach uh, in trying to incorporate the social, cultural and ethical or spiritual dimensions into it and also recognize at the same time the inbuilt limitations of this traditional economics and the developmental paradigm which are still be, which are still being implemented. It also successfully inter, intertwines the cognitions of these natural resources with its use by the humankind. Now, uh, based on all these, you know, uh, approaches, it, it tries to, you know, uh, locate the kind of relationship humans share with nature. Now, the methodology which are uh, being followed. Uh, close in close relationship with nature. It demonstrates the you know symbiotic relationship which exists between nature and culture, making it essential for us to acknowledge the rich uh, traditional ecological knowledge and forming an important ecological knowledge and forming understood because there is a symbiotic relationship which exists between in nature and culture and therefore, it, it requires and uh, it demands for uh, to acknowledge the traditional uh, ecological knowledge. Now, this traditional knowledge which is normally possessed by the local communities in a way should be validated and integrated as knowledge with the formal knowledge in designing adaptive ma management strategies with community participation. This is something which uh, Ramakrishna et al uh, and uh, would, would like to you know uh, reveal from their extensive study and uh, therefore, one, one needs to you know acknowledge and then uh, design uh, the formal knowledge and this uh, traditional knowledge in a way should be clubbed together as, as we had talked about in the lectures on this uh, indigenous people's life projects and development course. Uh, I mean the theme of that uh, how the coexistence is necessary. Now, this, this traditional people in a way are in close interaction with the natural environment which has only not only saved their cultural identity, value system and indeed the, uh, the economic well being. In this relationship, they respect nature as a sacred entity. So, in a way they have that uh, the spiritual and the cultural connections uh, with nature. Now, the interconnectivity between these uh, the ecology and social system, how, how are they being interconnected? These traditional societies in a way maintains a close connectivity with nature and also tend to view themselves as part of a cultural landscape. Now, for example, Jhum which means uh, sifting cultivation uh, is pretty much uh, dominant uh, among the uh, indigenous people is perhaps integral not just an economic uh, uh, aspect, but is integral to part of their socio-cultural definitions of uh, most people especially in Northeast India. And indigenous culture is seen as sacred because they see it as having a close relation relationship to their spirit world. Of late, uh, there is a realization has a realization has crept in the in that ecological health of the you know fragile mountains, because mountain is vital not only for 
the traditional societies living there, but also for those living in the neighboring plains. You know why the uh, ecosystems of the hills is important in equal to uh, people who live in the neighboring plains is because as a result of uh, for example deforestation or maybe uh, if the uh, resources are depleted in the hills it would have caused a lot of hamper to the neighboring plains because uh, you can witness uh, you know a landslides and uh, flooding and uh, we have what we call as the cloud burst and all which the you know natural surrounding is not able to retain and you have uh, encounter a lot of you know cat catastrophic kind of uh, problems uh, and therefore, if the, the health, the ecological health of the mountains are equally important for those who inhabit the plains. So, therefore, this sort of realizations or the kind of uh, interconnections uh, in a way are being sort of understood in a more holistic way. Now, in the animistic belief system, these uh, old traditional uh, societies identify themselves with the natural settings around them, and therefore, uh, within a given cultural context, this its mountain society has had its own cultural imprint on the landscape. Therefore, emphasis should be laid upon local issues such as the social, economic, and cultural dimensions of natural resource management. Now, how do we try to you know broaden this idea of natural resource management? We can't afford to uh, devote only to every a single perspective, but rather the social economic and the cultural dimensions all has to be you know uh, brought in so that there is a lasting if not uh, holistic approach of uh, natural resource management will be realized. And uh, also the psychological dimensions is important because uh, that can ensure a community participation which are based on the system of the local communities which they can in a way relate to. Therefore, to ensure a sustainable livelihood or development of the uh, mountain societies, one needs to incorporate all these aspects. Now, uh, why is the conservation of forests in a way again important? It is increasingly felt that uh, one possible method to conserve the you know forested areas is to see them as cultural landscape. So, by injecting the uh, idea of this cultural landscape, uh, there, there is a greater possibility of you know conserving the forest uh, as it has a complex socio-economic expression of not just the terrestrial ecosystem that have in a way eco, uh, you know co-evolve under the interactive influence of these biophysical factors as well as human societies uh, at different levels that is uh, based on their cultural, social and uh, technological development. Traditionally, uh, this concept of this cultural landscape is linked to a given natural landscape unit where humans function as a part of socio-ecological uh, system. Now, therefore, uh, this idea of uh, cultural landscape in a way uh, can enhance or be really effective in terms of conserving the forest. The uniqueness of this heritage again lies in that the value system here is interpreted in a more holistic sense. The interfere by outsiders in the in this ecosystem has in a way led to the 
extensive amount of this deforestation. For example, the commercial extractions uh, for, for short term economic gains have uh, large ramifications and in that the gap between uh, the rich and the poor is getting wider. So, which is itself you know becoming a critical social issue in many developing developing countries. Now, this this process of deforestation has not only damaged the mountain environment, but also adversely impacted the environment in the plains down below uh, due to rapid uh, erosive losses and depositions of the soil and uncontrolled flooding of the plains. Now, these are some of the you know uh, repercussions which are being witnessed as a result of deforestations. Now, looking at the you know as, as our focus is mostly on the traditional uh, knowledge, one also needs to uh, I mean by highlighting the issue of this the farming system. Uh, in, in their study, uh, Ramakrishnan et al. saw how these traditional farming systems are different from the modern agriculture with a kind of crop diversity and the associated biodiversity. How? Because the modern agriculture system is maintained artificially through external inputs and this eventually degrades the soil. Whereas, the traditional methods use organic, organically managed multi species croppings unlike the monocropping in modern agriculture. Now, that is the kind of how the response of the soil or the nutrients of the soils are in a way being effectively managed in the multi species cropping which is pretty much prevalent among the you know indigenous peoples farming system. Now, the traditional systems are highly variable and designed to fit into a given uh, socio-ecological system. For example, Jum essentially is an agroforestry practice. Now, for instance, there is a, a idea which uh, revolves around saying that in Juming practices, the whole forests are being you know cut down. But uh, uh, an extensive study which is being made by Ramakrishnan and et al has uh, pointed out that the zoom uh, practices essentially is agro forestry practices. So, in a way alongside uh, agri agriculture you also have this uh, the conservation of forest which is being carried out and as we had uh, have the, um, pointed shown the clearly that uh, the modern agriculture system is maintained artificially through external inputs that is by using different kinds of like chemicals or uh, fertilizers so and so forth it invites a lot of you know uh, not just disrupting the soil nutrients in the long run but also it affects the whole uh, ecosystem now therefore uh, with this sort uh, presentation we are just trying to look at how uh, the scientists or in a way uh, who, who have that formal knowledge uh, is, is different from the uh, traditional uh, who, who is rich in traditional wisdom and, and the manner in which they have tries to look at uh, they perceive nature and their natural surroundings and also uh, the kind of engagement they have in these agriculture practices and farming is to be understood uh, in a much more wider holistic manner. If one has to uh, you know have an in-depth meaning of a traditional knowledge. So, you can uh, perhaps uh, read for this book or maybe have a book review on this you can just uh, browse and you will have a much more quicker understanding of this. Thank you.